Buttercup by George Webb Desant Once on a time there was an old wife who sat and baked. Now you must know that this old wife had a little son who was so plump and fat and so fond of good things that they called him Buttercup. She had a dog too whose name was Goldtooth and as she was baking all at once Goldtooth began to bark. Run out, Buttercup, there's a deer, said the old wife, and see what Goldtooth is barking at. So the boy ran out and came back crying out, Oh, heaven help us, here comes a great big witch with her head under her arm and a bag at her back. Jump under the kneading trough and hide yourself, said his mother. So in came the old hag. Good day, she said. God bless you, said Buttercup's mother. Isn't your Buttercup at home today? asked the hag. No, that he isn't. He's out in the wood with his father shooting grouse. Plague it, said the old hag, for I had such a nice little silver knife I wanted to give him. Pip, pip, here I am, said Buttercup under the kneading trough and out he came. I'm so old and stiff in the back, said the hag. You must creep into the bag and fetch it out yourself. But when Buttercup was well into the bag, the old hag threw it over her back and strode off, and when they had gone a good bit of the way, the old hag got tired and asked, How far is it to Snorrington? Half a mile, answered Buttercup. So the hag put down the sack on the road and went aside by herself into the woods and lay down to sleep. Meantime, Buttercup set to work and cut a hole in the sack with his knife. Then he crept out and put a great root of a fir tree into the sack and ran home to his mother. When the hag got home and saw what there was in the sack, you may fancy she was in a fine rage. Next day, the old wife sat and baked again, and her dog began to bark just as he did the day before. Run out, Buttercup, my boy, said she, and see what Goldtooth is barking at. Well, I never, cried Buttercup as soon as he got out. If there isn't that ugly old beast coming again with her head under her arm and a great sack on her back. Under the kneading trough with you and hide, said his mother. Good day, said the hag. Is your buttercup at home today? I'm sorry to say he isn't, said his mother. He's out in the woods with his father shooting grouse. What a bore, said the hag. Here I have this beautiful silver spoon and I want to give it him. Pip, pip, here I am, said buttercup and crept out. I'm so stiff in the back, said the old witch. You must creep into the sack and fetch it out yourself. So when Buttercup was well into the sack, the hag swung it over her shoulders and set off home as fast as her legs could carry her. But when they had gone a good bit, she grew weary and asked, How far off is to Storrington? A mile and a half, answered Buttercup. So the hag set down the sack and went aside into the wood to sleep a bit. But while she slept, Buttercup made a hole in the sack and got out and put a great stone in it. Now when the old witch got home, she made a great fire on the hearth and put a big pot on it and got everything ready to boil. Buttercup. But when she took the sack and thought she was going to turn out Buttercup into the pot, down plumped the stone and made a hole in the bottom of the pot so that the water ran out and quelched the fire. Then the old hag was in a dreadful rage and said, If he makes himself ever so heavy next time, he shan't take me in again. The third day, everything went just as it had gone twice before. 
Goldtooth began to bark, and Buttercup's mother said to him, Do run out and see what our dog is barking at. So he went out, but he soon came back, crying out, Heaven save us, here comes the old hag again with her head under her arm and a sack at her back. Jump under the kneading trough and hide, said his mother. Good day, said the hag as she came in at the door. Is your buttercup at home today? You're very kind to ask after him, said his mother. But he's out in the wood with his father shooting grouse. What a bore now, said the old hag. Here I have got such a beautiful silver fork for him. Pip, pip, here I am, said buttercup as he came out from under the kneading trough. I'm so stiff in the back, said the hag. You must creep into the sack and fetch it out for yourself. But when Buttercup was well inside the sack, the old hag had swung it across her shoulders and set off as fast as she could. This time she did not turn aside to sleep by the way, but went straight home with Buttercup in the sack. And when she reached her house, it was Sunday. So the old hag said to her daughter, Now you must take Buttercup and kill him and boil him nicely till I come back, for I'm off to church to bid my guests to dinner. So when all in the house were gone to church, the daughter was to take Buttercup and kill him. But then she didn't know how to set about it at all. Stop a bit, said Buttercup. I'll soon show you how to do it. Just lay your head on the chopping block and you'll soon see. So the poor silly thing laid her head down and Buttercup took an axe and chopped her head off. Just as if she had been a chicken. Then he laid her head in the bed and popped her body into the pot and boiled it so nicely. And when he had done that, he climbed up on the roof and dragged up with him the fir tree root and the stone and put one over the door and the other at the top of the chimney. So when the household came back from church and saw the head on the bed, they thought it was the daughter who lay there asleep. And then they thought they would just taste the broth. Goodbye, my troth, buttercup broth, said the old hag. Goodbye, my troth, daughter broth, said buttercup down the chimney. But no one heeded him. So the old hag's husband, who was every bit as bad as she, took the spoon to have a taste. Goodbye, my troth, buttercup broth, said he. Goodbye, my troth. Daughter broth, said Buttercup down the chimney pipe. And they all began to wonder who it could be that chattered so, and ran out to see. But when they came out at the door, Buttercup threw down on them the fir tree root and the stone, and broke all their heads to bits. After that, he took all the gold and silver that lay in the house, and went home to his mother, and became a rich man.